we can definitely work in this one uh, rather than using rather than using the quotient rule as well as chain rule. Um, you take a test, sure. So what we recognize here is there's a lot of different operations that are going on. So kind of Logan, what I talked about um, last class period as well as this period, if we take the ln, what's nice about taking the ln on both sides is then we can apply the properties of logarithms, right? And we could take the log if we wanted to, but if we're using like the log of another base, if you guys remember the derivative of a log is a little bit more complicated than just the derivative of the natural log. So if I take the ln of both sides, All right. Now, this is going to be a little bit easier to take the derivative. However, I just need to understand, if I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, here I have the y. So we have to make sure that we um, take into account that. But again, let's apply the um, rules, the operations of the logarithms. Now, I'm going to kind of do this all at once, because we've already covered the rules of logarithms. Okay. So I understand that this is going to be a 1 half ln of x minus 3 minus a 3 ln of 2x plus 3. Is everybody OK with my expansion of the logarithm? That's what we covered a couple class periods ago. You can take the difference, the division by subtraction. You can rewrite your powers. That would be 1 half. And you always bring your powers out in front. Yes? Yes, it is. Well, I, yeah. There you go. I was looking at the wrong one. So yeah, it remains 2x plus 1. OK, so now we can take the derivative. Now again, we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So that becomes an issue here, because here we have y. So what does the derivative of um, y, or ln of y, with respect to x really represent or really mean? We'll come back to that. And I'm just going to rewrite this all over again. OK, so again. With the derivative of respect to y, we got to kind of think of this like the chain rule. We can take the derivative of ln of y. That is just 1 over y. But again, we still have to take the derivative of our inside function, which is y, with respect to x. So the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. Again, that's what we're looking for as far as finding the derivative anyways, which is nice. Now, taking the derivative here. I remember that the derivative of ln of x is just basically 1 over x, where the ln of u is basically u prime over u. Right? You're basically taking, or sorry, let's look at it like this, 1 over u times u prime. And that's basically what I did here. I did the chain rule. I did 1 over y times the derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx. But a lot of times, when we're dealing with it in one form, we can just write it as u prime over u. So over here, I notice that the derivative of my inside function u is just 1. So therefore, I know my numerator is going to be 1 over 2 times x minus 3 um, minus 3. And then here, the derivative of my inside function is 2. So that's going to be 3 times 2 all over 2x plus 1. Now, if I wanted to solve for dy dx, all I have to do is multiply by y over 1. And we have dy dx is equal to, now we could simplify this. And then also, we need to remember what y equals. A lot of times, we actually write, like the y, write the y in front. We don't really need to distribute it. I don't really see the purpose of distributing what y is. So I'm just going to rewrite it in front. x minus 3 over. 2x plus 1 cubed. However, we could probably do some basic simplifying here. I'm going to keep that factored, because we usually like factored things. And But then do minus 6 over 2x plus 1. And that'd be all right. Or if you want to, you could do the quotient rule, chain rule, and all that kind of stuff. Right? Yes? Where? Is that correct? At the very bottom. Yeah, dy dx. So the derivative of? D, the derivative with, of y with respect to x 
is equal all of that. No, so, okay, 